It's been a while, it's been a while But I'm coming out of my shell And I never thought I would fall in love With someone just like you And nobody here now I hear you calling out I hear you calling out in love And nobody here now But I hear you calling out Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to another rip roaring edition of White Walkers Chat and Crack, the Ultra Rugby Roundup Show in association with Livestream Solutions. I'm David Topping, White Walker One, and I'm glad you've joined us again for another rip snorting run around the Ulsterverse, uh, as only us White Walkers can do it. Um, so uh, tonight on uh, tonight's show, we've got the big news, of course, with Johnny Petrie's departure from Ulster Rugby. We're going to have a wee look at what he's done for the province, what he may not have done. And we're next uh, for, for Ulster in general. Uh, we will have a chat with Connor Broomfield. He's going to give us his insights on what's been happening uh, up here in the northern reaches. And uh, we also have a special guest from South Africa. So let's have a wee look and see what's happened. So everybody, grab your beverages, let's pack down and engage. Good evening, folks. How are you? All righty. Thank you much for having Good stuff. Uh, well, what a crew we got here. Obviously, my partners in crime, the Night King himself, Nigel Quigley, and from the South Wales Ulster Rugby Supporters Club, Mr. Chris Brownfield. How are you? Not too bad. Evening, Davey. Evening, Nigel. How are you doing, man? And uh, we're very glad to welcome two special guests, uh, Mr. Connor Brownfield from the Leinster Lion. Connor, how are you? Very good, thanks. And Thank you so much for having me back on the show. Good to see oh, you. Here. No problem at all, Connor. Say we're we're, we're glad you've you, you've took the time to, to to be with us this evening and uh, and have a chat with us about what's going on here in the northern reaches. Um, and Mr. Simon Carey, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm great. Couldn't complain where we are. And where where are you at the minute? Tell tell us what what you are at at the minute right. out there. We're in the uh, Cullen Hotel in Cape Town. Ah, oh, hold on. That'd be a stone so away from a certain stadium by any chance? Well, that's five minutes away, I think, I believe. Ah, so we're going to have a bit of crack with us. The Stormers at the weekend is going to be fun. Obviously, we're going to have yeah. a look at both. Uh, uh, we'll look We'll look forward to the Stormers game and also we'll have a, a look back at what happened with the Sharks and uh, um, uh, and see whether or not Chris Brownfield actually did lift Ox and Che. You know, um, <laughs> you know, answers on a postcard to the usual address. Um, so, guys, well, what's been, what's been happening, Nigel? What's been happening with you? How's things been? You know me, man. Just working and stuff like that. It's really a boring life I lead. I have to say. <laughs> I mean, my excitement this weekend, all and watching Ulsters, I'm going to buy a van. Yay! Hey, <laughs> Nigel, you know how to rock. I'm telling you, on the edge, man. Nothing holds you back, mate. Nothing holds you back at all. I'll have a beer at 10 on Saturday with the games, like, you know, actually looking forward to your game, Connor. That's the one I think that'll be the one to watch, but anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. although, although, really, really, the van underneath will say Trotter's Independent Retailer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Chris? How's things been? Yeah, still like me. Um, up and down the country as usual. Uh, there's been just hectic weather over here. Um, I, don't know, I know it's been pretty bad back home, but uh, we had a drop of snow this morning. We had hailstones, rain, thunder, lightning, and I thought I thought I was going to get stuck in M4 again. So luckily, oh. got way back. I avoided a primary in tonight, so hopefully <laughs> signal the others a wee bit better. <laughs> yeah, any worse. Here, here, at least you're not up with the aliens this time around, uh, Chris. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> 
Give that man no more caffeine. Well, here, uh, well, you know what? I, I don't know about yourselves, but I've, I've actually been looking forward to this because for once, I can actually say, in a school in Royal Grammar School, won an actual school's cup again. Yay. <laughs> and of course, here's a big shout for Banger Academy. Banger! <laughs> yep, big, big wins all around. Uh, yeah, and, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, it was a great yeah. win for a school over uh, Assumption. Um, and, uh, and of course, Banger, you know, cracking a nice one as well. And of course, the uh, the big schools cup match itself it was a very, very good. It was a very, very good game all round. Yep. You know, and big congrats there um, to the eventual winners, as we as we may have thought it would have happened. Yeah, um, I think it was a closer game than many thought, though. What's that absolutely. Like? Absolutely, certainly. Uh, sort of first, first ten minutes for sure, for sure. Um, but uh, you know, definitely, it. Uh, it uh, I think it turned out the way we thought it would do. Anyway, um, nice. um obviously, we've got the women's sex nations uh, up and running as well. Um, you know, what your what are your thoughts after that opening game for 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 the women guys? I kick off. You don't mind. I think. Um, I, I think it's very hard to know where the ladies are with. Think the way things have been the last few years, mm -hmm. and uh, you just didn't know what to expect. I thought they gave a fairly good show of themselves, to be honest. You know, when you consider who they were playing, yeah, I thought, I thought they stood up well. And if they can improve through the uh, through the tournament, it could be interesting to see where they end up. Yeah, I, I thought they were very much improved mm -hmm. now, and uh, uh, and certainly they seem to garner quite quite a lot of good uh, good news news stories from uh, from around the media. Um, as to as to the the steps that they're making forward, which is great to see. Uh, uh, Simon, what do you think yourself? Did you manage to catch any of it? Simon still mute. No, he's not. Yes. Yeah. Simon, did you catch any of the uh, women's Six Nations? Can't hear him. No, Simon's calling wibbly wobbly the land is hog. <laughs> right, so it's a film. <laughs> And then it's three uh, words, and it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, so, uh, David, I'll pick that up. Um, I've got to say, for the uh, from the women's Ireland, given that we were what it was seventeen three at half time, I think wasn't it? Yeah. And then from actually putting extra fourteen points on in the second half, you know, I think that was a a brilliant resurgence. So, okay, the second half also went away from them in terms of the uh, the French result, but I thought for the, the two. The, the 14 points going in was actually a really, really strong second half for them and a big credit all round, really. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. So definitely, definitely signs of improvement there, all right. I think there's still a big gulf in class between Ireland and the likes of France and England. And I know there's a big, big gap to try, try and bridge, but there's certainly a bit more structure and clarity about, about um, how they're going about their business. So, Connor, what do you think needs to change? What do you think the, the ladies need to do to just go that next next level? <coughs> well, first of all, it's been, been, been widely discussed. They need more more support from the IRFU, more more be, better um, better working conditions, better 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 uh, alloc allocation of funding towards the women's game. And I think I think there there have been improvements in that regard. There's more of them on central contracts and. Um, they're given more coaching and and and, and dedicated time towards their profession. Um, apart 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 from that, I I, I think um, they 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 need they need the the same criteria as as the, as, as as any successful sporting. They need need a good good coach. They need there needs to be a bit of raw talent there to work with, and and then they need a game plan that's that suits them. And, Sounds like you're um, right now, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> I, see a, I see a mirror image here, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we have to bear in mind that, that the women are coming from a, a low base. Like, you know, last last year they was, was a bit of an Anas Harabinus for them, you know. Um, um, they, 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 uh, um, but they've, uh, there's definitely signs of improvement. And to go to France, someone was telling me that the, the bookies had it at, at 45 points or something, and they lost by 21. So, yeah. 
if, 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 you, if you go by that metric, it, it was a good result. Yeah, absolutely. And I think going forward, you know, you'd expect them to to beat Italy this week at home, wouldn't you? You'd you'd hope so, but but like like going going by last year's re, 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 results, um, you can't take anything for granted. But yeah, home 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 advantage and and the improvements they showed in the small game, then it would definitely be a setback if they didn't deliver this week. I mean, Italy came off the back of a big thumper last week, 48-0 was against England, so they're really on the back foot. And, yeah. You know, again, yeah. huge, huge development needed there. Yeah. England are a different level, though, aren't they, really? Yeah. At the women's, they're very strong. Very much, very much so, yeah. Agree with that. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, well, thank you very much. I was going to take this up to the side, and uh, uh, we're going to reintroduce our final five. Uh, it's been uh, it's been great to bring it back and uh, and for everybody everybody watching uh, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching catch up if you want to get involved as our fan and five drop us a wee word uh, through the page and uh, uh, we would be more than happy to to, to have you on and, and have a chat about uh, uh, you know you're, you're an Oscar fan yeah for sure uh, can I just say we need to re rewrite the name of us now fan and five. I mean, I remember I was a fan on five once, and that took a good hour and a half. And now, yeah, <laughs> uh, it should be the fan of twenty-five, maybe. Uh, I, you may know. Be, I may be close to the mark. Uh, I, I maybe Simon. Yeah. Maybe Simon can get the sound sorted. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 look, guys, we're our our fan of five uh, for for this month uh, is Jim D. Khan. Um, <coughs> a couple of days ago, um, uh, Chris and I uh, caught up with Jamesy and. Uh, um, um, we had a, an absolutely excellent uh, chat with him. Uh, so uh, if you want to just run the, the video there uh, for us, Joe, and uh, we'll see you shortly. Hey, good evening, everyone, and uh, um, welcome to our panel five section. Today we have the brilliant TMZ Cohen. Jamesy, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you, sir? Oh, we're, we're absolutely sticking out. It's just uh, it's just great to have a, an extra voice here on the old blurbs, just to try and keep Brownfield under under observation for another couple of months. We can you know. try. <laughs> uh, well, no, yeah, we try, try is the operative word. <laughs> you know, but, uh, 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 I've put my objection forward. I am being abused already, and I object to such things. Well, what do you uh, expect? Objection sustained. Wouldn't be the first, <laughs> wouldn't be the first time a Bobby scrum off has been uh, been picked up. Won't be the last. <laughs> it definitely will not be the last. Thank you, last, Jamesy. So, so, what are you oh, getting? Sorry. Fire away. All right, so uh, GMD, big welcome and thanks very much for, for taking part in the show. Obviously, it's for Fan, uh, fan and Five uh, this evening, and you've been uh, selected amongst the many hundreds of thousands. I've had also all these supporters, fans, and you've been, you are the chosen one, GMD. I'm a very lucky man. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, yeah not a worry here, GMD. Let's go all the way back to the start. Tell us a wee bit about how you got into rugby and where and when did it start for you? Well, t to be fair, um, I'm a Cookstown lad, so uh, kind of growing up, uh, hockey was the sport uh, that I played at school. But my, my granddad, Mervyn, was a big rugby man. And uh, I've got uh, memories of being uh, a little nipper and watching uh, Ireland play in the Five Nations in the 90s. And of course, uh, that, that was a bit painful all around, to be fair. But um, uh, as I got older, uh, went to high school, started playing rugby uh, at Cookstown High, and that's kind of where it all really started. Um, yeah, get, getting uh, filled in uh, from left, right, and centre from every other uh, school that we played because, to be honest, we weren't very good, which is why I, I managed to make it into the first uh, 15. <laughs> so, so, what, so it was more here, so there was no sort of space to the head, did you yeah, pretty much. Uh, our our headmaster, uh, he, he really tried to introduce rugby at the school. And uh, <laughs> if you're in trouble, but you played rugby, you kind of got away with it. So, um, you know, if, if uh, you got a detention, but then you'd rugby practice, you kind of got out of that detention. So um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that, to be honest. <laughs> oh, well, that, I couldn't see that one. <laughs> 
So uh, a lot of great stuff. So all the way back to Kutztown, start off in hockey and then progress through in the rugby and, the, and then what we consider to be the, the ultimate sport of 15 v 15. So uh, sticking out, good stuff, wonderful. Uh, Davey, what do you think? Oh, you know what? It's, it's, it's going from uh, uh, shin splitting to uh, uh, to cracking nuts. You know, you you, you got to you got to go with it. You got to go with the flow. Um, yeah. Uh, which position do you play, James? Uh, I was hooker. Um, yeah. So uh, oh. very, very very much. Yeah. Well, actually, my, my nose here shows from uh, a, a few rugby incidents. Um, yeah, I, I, but I was soft. That was the thing. I I. I uh, I, I love playing it, but I just wasn't tough enough. Um, so I, I stopped actually playing at the time uh, I kind of left school because uh, I just kept getting injured or, you know, uh, I'd be kind of hit and I'd stay down for a little bit longer than I really should. So um, so I decided I'll, I'll just stick with hockey. And I, as I keep saying to my wife, um, I'm glad I ca- carried on playing hockey rather than playing rugby because I'm well into my forties and I'd be a broken man if I uh, stayed in the front row. You know? <laughs> um, well, well, here, just when we're talking about being a member of the front row union, um, if you uh, if you had your pick of the positions apart from the one you played in, which would it be? Well, uh, I was thinking about this, and um, as a kid, when when I picked up a rugby ball, who did I think I was when when I had the rugby ball in my hands? I thought it was Simon Gagan. So uh, it'd probably be a winger then. That uh, I'll, that try scored at Twickenham. Um, you know, that, that just that, that kind of sticks in, in my head as being one of those kind of highlights of uh, the nineties, <laughs> following Irish rugby anyway. So yeah, I'd be a winger, but I'm far too slow. So I probably would have got filled in anyway. So <laughs> I tell you what, Simon Gagan, not a bad sort of uh, champion of the sport, was he? You know, so uh, if that was your, that was your vision, absolutely bang on. Can't blame anyone for that. Uh, yeah, you know, a slow fat we... Simon Gagan, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, any Simon Gagan, better than no Simon Gagan. You know, and I look back on on that kind of year and maybe before then, I was sort of. You know, we we grew up with Tony McCoy, uh, Tony McCoy, and I think I was the size of up to his kneecap uh, back then. So I wasn't going to be a prop at any stage. But you know, I, I used to just watch Trevor England in absolute awe and just say, like, "Wow, yeah. what a way to put on the pitch!" You know, and um, he would have been one of my inspirations uh, back then. You know, so uh, yeah, great stuff. So, so tell us, um, obviously, it started off we at the school, but what, what really made you fall in love with rugby specifically? Well, that, that's the thing, kind of, um, apart from my grandfather, um, we weren't really a, a, a rugby family. So um, my first time really uh, up, up at Ravenhill would have been kind of when I went to uni. So I went to Queens in, in Belfast. And so that would have been the year after uh, we won the Heineken Cup, the European Cup. So it was kind of that two, 2000, 2001. Uh, season you kind of captured uh, that euphoria yeah, as much as anything else, really. Pardon? You kind of tapped that euphoria a little bit as well, caught up in that yeah. kind of well, excitement of that era. Well, uh, obviously, you know, I, I used to love watching Ulster on the BBC, um, you know, so so watched a lot of games, um, you know, on the TV. But I think my um, once got up there on, on a Friday night, um, when, when I was at Queen's, that, that was it, you know, um. I was kind of thinking about this uh, during the week, and uh, my most memorable game, kind of the early kind of years, was um, the Wasps uh, European game where um, David Humphrey scored a couple of uh, points. Uh, it was like the I think he scored thirty-seven points um, in a big win against Wasps, and that would have been I think October two thousand and one. I think something like that. And um, I actually managed to, to get myself a free ticket because I was a ball boy. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of... Is that boy or bag? So that got, got paid to watch that game. And, uh, yeah, after that, that, that was kind of like properly when I when I became a proper Ulster rugby fan. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, it wasn't the last 20 odd years. <laughs> Yeah, who are. I mean, at one point, you and I were together on a pitch side with a certain really best. Do you remember that? I certainly do. I certainly do. Uh, yeah, I got, got a lovely picture of that um, framed upstairs. Um, uh, yeah, two two good-looking men there. You know, two... two. 
you might say. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, excellent stuff. Yeah, and Davey, uh, what, what's your memory? Can you remember when you first joined, uh, sort of like, follow, started following us around the MLX you and Ralph Um, I think for me, I think it was, you know, uh, my first experience of going up the Raven Hill was actually with uh, my old school, Vittorio Royal. Um, we managed to get to uh, Sammy's of the Skills Cup one year. I think it was just before, um, um, it, it would have been, let's see if we get this right. Been about 2002, uh, 2003. Um, it was actually my brother's class, it got through. Um, and you were talking guys like Nick Finley, um, and you know, so a lot of uh, we had a lot of Ulster prospects, um, in that, in that year group. Um, and it's one of the few times where we had maybe more than one uh, Ulster schools, you know, person within that. Um, so for me, just being up there in the old Raven Hill, up in the, the big stands, uh, and just, you know, you get to soak the atmosphere, you know, and just soaking it in like a sponge. For me, that was my first experience at Raven Hill, but with Ulster, um, I had to be a little longer for that one. But when it happened, it was uh, a... We had uh, two games. There was one against Zebra. You know, we started with always start the start and start start slow and work it up. Um, but then the second game was a European one with uh, um, Harlequins. Um, but, you know, that just just the absolute atmosphere of the place come alive Friday night under the lights. You couldn't ask for better. You know, and, uh, and ever since I've been hooked on it, and um, you know, it's uh, well, I guess the where it got to now for, you know because of that. It's went from you know commenting on on shows to you know being a guest on some of the shows to now hosting you know the shows and producing directing these things you know so uh, you know it's a for, for me it's just it's just been a one long continuous journey and it's it gets better every 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 season yeah it does despite the challenges uh, the, the ups and downs well not people on there just now but you know but it is there's something there's something just captured like a little magnet and you has been drawn to it week in week out even when there's a rocky patch, like I'm still going to give the guys 150% of the time and attention, and I'm not absolutely fine. But, um, Jim, did you just bring up Rory? You, you went to Queens, um, and that kind of really sparked your Rory stuff. But why did you leave the province? What, what took you away from, from Northern Ireland and Ulster? What, you know, what, was the, what was the next phase for you? Uh, contrary to popular belief, I wasn't chased out. I, uh, I moved across <laughs> to Durham to do my teacher training. And. Right. Uh, yeah, and the plan was, to be honest, I'll, I'll, you know, come across, do my teacher training and then go home, get a job. And that would be that kind of thing. Because, um, yeah, at, at the time you had to pay to, to do your teacher training um, back home and they were offering a bursary over here. So it was a non-brainer, really. And, uh, yeah, kind of like, like the north of England, like, like Durham and, yeah, kind of 20 years later and I'm, I'm still here you know they haven't yeah. chased me and back yet you know and, yeah, and you're doing pretty well pretty successful yeah yeah uh, you know yeah. W- wife and kids and very much settled in the northeast of england yeah county durham's great Brilliant. Yep, well, well, here, fantastic. Well, well here jamesy what, what, what would be the, the the single you know the single best thing about being an expat oscar fan you know and following oscar rugby you know, from afar, what you know, what's the what do you enjoy most about it? Um, do you know, I, I think the, the passion of being an Ulster rugby fan, weirdly, it, it's kind of more concentrated when you're away, kind of a, a, appreciating back being back home, you know, um, watching the boys at Ravenhill is just you know, even better when you know it, it only happens every so often. You know, yeah. when, when I think back to when I could just kind of wander along the road because I, I lived, you know, literally about 20 minutes away from the ground. Um, you know, it, it was almost too easy back back then, you know, t- to now it is, you know, a, a proper um, event, you know, and, and now bringing my son across, you know, um, he's now been to a couple of games. Um, you know, Chris organized something really nice for the uh, away game. At sale last year, uh, the game that 
you know the match shouldn't be uh, mentioned but the the kind of experience was was wonderful um you know and then it, his first uh, home game was there last january so it is it's kind of extra special be, being away i think it just kind of almost appreciated a bit more than than it did when when i lived back home you know it is uh, and you can i just have that i actually think you know maybe maybe that's why south wales gets the tag of the brill brigade i think we literally appreciate every chance to see the lads and yeah. the ladies of also run in the, the academy and because it's not a weekend week out i think it changed our relationship and our desire to just back the lads and the ladies with the cops whatever happens and i think yeah. that does change the mindset of it yeah you see um i i don't see the the brill brigade as any sort of a, a negative thing actually um i can almost wear it as a a badge of honor because um i'm a supporter i'm a fan you know um being, being an ulster rugby fan for long enough to to remember you know good times and bad times and you know your supporter because you support the team you support you know everything about them you know so yeah, uh absolutely. yeah you know i, I you know, i'm, I'm not, I'm not saying, part, part of the yeah, I'm not, then. that mindset that mindset seems he goes absolutely hand to hand with ethos, ethos of our club you know and, and you've been a huge part of that you were despite being you know so far up the north in the northeast welcome with open arms in our club and, and you know, little James, you know, the first time I met him, oh, I could have kidnapped him. He was nearly my man. Still, <laughs> you know, uh, I can mean that. I got a minute, the sun's got diddle going off. I'm going to get diddled back in. <laughs> but, uh, you, know, I, you know, it's an absolute pleasure, you know, having you and your family associate with our club. And, and yeah, I'm telling you, Omar, I think that will be good thing. It's not necessarily a negative tag. I think it's got, you know, I think people see us as, you know, fans who go over and above, over and beyond, you know, what what many supporters think is, is necessary or or um sort of accepted and uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think I think the players really, really appreciate it. And uh, I think the fan, I think the coaches and the leadership appreciate our contributions what's it up else and you know if you're a part of that that's that's up to you fans, you know whatever. So um just I just in the ones the end of go on TV sorry. Oh, I often think uh, it's uh, it's little things like uh, the Nevin flag. You know, um, you know, I I could never see you know certain sections of of our fandom you know going as far as getting flags together. You know, getting the you know the thumbs up from from the family and uh, and displaying that everywhere. And uh, you know, even seeing the photographs of of the flag over in South Africa at the minute. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. it, it just fills you with a bit of pride and just saying, well, hold yeah. on, there are Ulster fans out there doing this, you know, and putting putting the word out, you know, far and wide, whilst the rest of them are just seem to be hiding behind keyboards and, and thinking that they're, um, dare, dare I say, uh, grumpy, grumpy denizens of the, uh, the underground. Yeah. You know, so kind of choose your words, baby. I can read straight for that. <laughs> the, the thing about it is that everyone is allowed their opinion, you know, um, yeah. but I think you, you need to, to be able to kind of say it to someone's face, you know, if, um, you know, so the kind of keyboard warriors that will kind of do a lot of slagging off, fair enough, you're allowed those opinions, but would you say it to that person's face, you know, um, would you be as brutal, uh, unfair, um, you know, with some of the criticisms to players and management, you know, um, if you were speaking them face to face? I don't think you would, you know. So I, agree. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think I, they'd be more likely to um, to go for the uh, another shade of brown and uh, and run away like we Willy Winky on a uh, on a skateboard. I think so. I think so. <laughs> for sure. Well, um, no, absolutely not. Now, we're sort of just nearly rounding this off, but James, you just tell us, if you had been appointed as the interim coach of Ulster Rugby following the departure of Dan and, and you, you filled in as opposed to um, Richie Murphy, what would be your your message to the, well, to, a few, to a few different parties, to the players, yeah, first and foremost, to the squad as they approach the South African rounds and, and towards the end of the season, and also the, also the fan base as well. What would, what's your thoughts about if you were in, in Richie Murphy's shoes as, as James retired? T to be honest, I, I I would probably just say go out and start enjoying playing the rugby again, you know, because um, I think when when Ulster are at their best is when they they 
go and have a lash and you know sh show show their passion and you know get get stuck in and I, I I don't think we're that far away you know seen some some nice play this season and j just go out and actually enjoy it and and the results will come you know because certainly you know the real supporters are all behind you yeah absolutely I know it's HMT I'm seeing it you know and if that happens then the, fa the fans get back on board completely with it don't they if the players are showing that that passion the flair the skill sets we've got and at the start of the game last weekend against the Sharks there was some gay abandon going on but the ball was being thrown around under the legs and all sorts of little flick passes and and you can just see it, obviously, the guys had spent, you know, had about yeah. 30 minutes, kind of with a second win, came back into it, you know, and then it kind of went away from them. But I, I agree. I actually think James, you have been overplaying it a wee bit because they know they're just that close yeah. and they've just been overrunning the ball a wee bit and fingertips on a different day. A team playing with real confidence. That ball goes to hand day in, day out. And, and I, that's it. When, when things aren't going quite your way, confidence, understandably, will drop a little bit. You know, it, I, I did see enough in uh, big chunks of last week to, to see hopefully confidence will come back, you know, because, um, yeah, there, there, were, there were times when actually also were really in control of the game, you know, um, think think that that first, um, you know, Sharks try. It was just from, you know, an, an Ulster slight mistake in there, 22, hoofed forward and, you know, that then... Was kind of where where the sharks really started to build on from there. But yeah. these things yeah, they got they, they got their they got their belief from that, didn't they? Yeah, they were, that they were in it. Yeah, for sure. So um, so good. But um, James, can I just say it's it's a pleasure catching up with you, mate. It's been way too long since we've we've shared a beer of any kind together or a puppy or anything else. But um, <laughs> I'm hoping to see catch up with you at some stage. Hopefully. Either came in this season or, or next season, maybe depending then what happens with fixtures. Every challenge next year also will be facing some of the Newcastle Falcons. You know, and uh, you know, that's yeah. your doorstep. What a party for South Wales to get up to the road of East Oh, yeah. Well, you know, with me, Bay, get the fish and chips out, fella. Well, you're, you're all welcome to stay at my house. You know, just don't tell the wife. Mm. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. They'll be, they'll they'll need be a bigger tent. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you mean it? Do you get the big porter cabin out, you know, from 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 out behind the shed? That's well. T t to be fair, if everyone does turn up, I may uh, have to move in there myself. But uh... yeah. I think you'll be using the school. The school gym will be our house for the next two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but Jamesy, as always, buddy, an absolute pleasure. And uh, you look well, mate. I really, really wish you and the family all the best for the rest of the year and and good health, you all. And to, thanks for having me on, guys. I've loved it. Yeah, hey, absolutely, James. Hey, sure. you, uh, we will have you on again very soon, mate. Take care, lads. Thanks, All right. Yeah. Thanks Cheers, for James. See you later. Bye bye. Bye, baby. Thanks for being first today. I best unmute myself, will I? Um, I was good, lads, and nice to hear from Jamesy. I've spoken to Jamesy online quite often, but I think that's actually the first time I've heard his voice. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's nice to hear him. Accent, which is the main thing. He hasn't gone all Jordy on a shit. All right. And Simon needs to unmute himself. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think it's Davey muted. DT, can you hear us? Is DT on mute? We can't hear DT. Can anybody oh, hear DT? Hear here, that sounds better, doesn't it? That sounds yeah. much better. <laughs> what color phones in there? I've seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, my eye ran out last night, <laughs> so uh, I'm frozen in a different manner. <laughs> Bloody hell! Oh, here, come on, lad. Just let it go. Come on. Yeah. Here. So anyway, let's get into the the, the big chat of the the big chat of the time with the departure of. Uh, our former CEO, Johnny Petrie, and uh, the inevitable swarm of media uh, stuff since then. Um, obviously, Ulster now have now got a new interim CEO, uh, the former head of uh, uh, the Southeast uh, Health and Social Care Trust, uh, and a former rugby player to boot. Um, 
really nice tonight. We're going to have a wee look at uh, what uh, what Mr. Petrie has, has done well, some stuff that maybe is not going so well, uh, and uh, uh, and obviously, um, Connor, we we invited you on tonight to to have a chat with you, just to sort of get an idea of um, you know where it looks from a non Ulster point of view. Um, uh, like you've you've seen what happened over the last few few days and weeks. Um, you know, where do you where can Ulster go from here, Connor? Well, well, first of all, um, to anyone, anyone watching him, uh, anyone, any of the lads that know me know that I'm uh, throw my support behind um, any of the provinces, whether that be that my own province of Leinster, Ulster, or indeed Connacht. So, um, I, <laughs> I give them all my a bit of support. Uh, so I'm not going to come on here and start pontificating about about how how great we are down in Leinster and how how uh, how 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 we do things so much better. Um, like like um, if, if if a few observations. Though. I've just been thinking about this since I was talking to to um, to Davey there the other evening. Like um, you ask you ask uh, you ask most people. I think um, the average rugby fan. Who is the Leinster CEO? And uh, I'd, I'd honestly say a lot. Of m- most people w- wouldn't know his name. Um, not not out of ignorance, like or not, they're fair weather. But he's just not in the news very often. He's behind the scenes, um, going away, doing 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 his um, doing doing his work on, on the business side of things. And you you very rarely hear of him. His name is Sh- Shane Nolan. He took over from from another man. Called Mick Mick Dawson, who was um, who was CEO of Leinster for twenty one years. He was a bond trader before that. Came came from a business background and ran the affairs. And yeah, you never you never really heard of him in in rugby related matters. But uh, he's he's probably the big the biggest influence on Leinster's transformation and Leinster's development in, in, into a. Um, into into such a, a strong club side over the last twenty years, um, and Shane, Shane Nolan has taken over. He's come comes from a business background as well, a corporate background with with with, with Google. Um, you 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 look you look at then then you look at you look at Ulster with, with Petri, and you you'd, you'd ask was what were they looking for a rugby man first with a little bit of business, or were they looking for for um. A, a, a CEO with with an interest in rugby. Um, there's been problems along the way, very well, well documented problems with with uh, with, with, with John, Johnny Petri. Um, um, is, is he singularly re- responsible? Pro- pro- probably not. But was he a strong enough le- leader to take the reins of of um, of 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 a, of a club side that was going places? Well, um, you, 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 um, it's, it's not it's not for me to answer, but but it's ultimately his tenure has ended in failure. Um, there's some high profile stuff like the sponsorship is is, is huge, using in losing the Kingspan, and um, the the fiasco over uh, the, the the match being transferred to 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 Aviva against La Rochelle, and and, and um, there was a big loss of revenue there. And uh, now, now the latest was was the Ferrara over over the um, kit sponsorship ship deal. Um, as an outsider, I'd have have to have to have to say something doesn't sit sit right there. And um, um, he's uh, he's not obviously not singularly to, to to blame, but but he is the fall guy, and you you can you can see why. Yeah, I can, I can, I can understand. Uh, you know, obviously, from from a point of view of, of uh, how things have transpired over, you know, over the, the last few months, uh, and I suppose we can we can really track it from uh, from the decision to to change to the the, the plastic pitch right through uh, to, to to where things are, and and of course, you know, things are progressing all the time. You know, we've seen a report in the media about. Uh, the potential kit sponsorship deal with the uh, Cabo, you know, falling through. Um, can I just uh, pop in there, Dave? But I read you today can do. That, 
that apparently Kappa are not in a good shape themselves and may be yeah. in financial difficulties. And that may in part explain why that deal has fallen through. It's not really down to we don't want to sponsor Ulster. They they have their own issues and may not be in a position to supply Ulster. Mm, yeah, but I, I also heard, heard then there was another comment that they, they were they were sold and the, the new um, the, the the new investors in the company did, didn't want want to um, take take on the the deal. Would that mean well, Connor due to the King's Band logo? Do you think? I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure, and I think it was Ian Logan that made that comment. That was just um, right. browsing through. Um, it wouldn't be the Kingspan logo next season, though. Well, it'll be for one more year, isn't it? Well, it would be actually, yeah, for it one is. more year. Right? Ah, well, it's, it's for one more. It's, well, it's it's for one year, depending on when a new sponsor is found. Obviously, when the new sponsor is found, then you know they will very gently Kingspan will gently pull out. Yeah. But you won't do that. But you won't do that mid-season, David. You're not going to sort of sell fans a load of shirts and then say halfway through the season, I actually you want these ones now. That, that's just yeah. Different. <laughs> uh, I, think it'll run, I think it'll run a season. Yeah, I think that's um, it's pretty much how it goes. Oh my god, Jamesy Cowan's still awake. Hey. He's in his bed. Go back to bed, Jimmy. Oh, Jamesy, good to see you on there. Oh. And, oh, by the way, I want to give a, a big shout out to our good friend Gregor Galway, who is actually watching the show uh, from Heathrow Airport. Oh, uh, there, get yourself down, Gregor. Yeah, Gregor's the most dedicated supporter in oh, <laughs> the world, I think. Yeah. Oh, absolutely! You know, definitely give that man a medal twice. You know, um, and, uh, you know what? Um, I last month when we we talked about what happened with with Dan, um, I made comment about uh, issues within the Ulster setup. Uh, I stand by those comments, uh, and I uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, I don't think things are over here. There's still, there's still, there's still work to be done, and I have a sea suspicion that that work will be done sooner rather than later. I'm quite positive by the end of the season. Um, but my my question to you all would be, where do we go next? Obviously, we have an interim CEO. Um, you know, we have uh, an interim head coach. Where do you think this is going to go, uh, Connor? We'll, we'll start with you, sir. Where where is this going? Um, um, I I think um, as as regards on fields, R- Richie Murphy is very much an, an IRFU man, and um, he has he has big aspirations as a rugby coach, and I think he's 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 um, he's proved himself very well with 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 um, the under twenties and being able to take on a bunch of new players and gel them together. Um, very, very, and very, very well in a short space of time. So, um, I, I think, I think he he can get the results in the short term for Ulster, um, and that that will lead, probably lead to a, a long term appointment for him. So, I think he's 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 good. He's he should be good for Ulster, and um, the IRFU are, are getting wonder men in there. Um, I think it's it's significant as well that David Humphreys um, has 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 taken over the role of um, elite, elite um, performance director with the IRFU. I think it's it's noteworthy that she's an Ulster man and he's also has a very strong business business background. So, you know, I I think that I think that his his brief would be would be. Uh, He'd have to go in, in there as a in neutral to Ulster, but his experience in the province was, was significant in his appointment, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simon, uh, um, you've obviously you've always seen this from from our side of, of, of the ponds. What what do you think? Uh, where do you think things are going to go from here? I'm here. Uh, we can't hear him. Uh, um, well, look, we'll, we'll we'll try and get you back on that one. Soon. Uh, Chris, uh, do you want to pop in there for a minute? <sighs> yep. Okay. So um, obviously, uh, yeah. I mean, there's many many comments that that uh, Connor's Connor's dropped in there, which I I absolutely would, would agree with um, regarding the, uh, the the Richie Murphy regarding uh, David Humphrey's positioning. 
Um, from some of those next parts, um, you know, Johnny Petri uh, was was a fantastic link to us as a club and, and done a huge amount of work uh, to support South Wales Us Rugby Supporters Club and put us pretty much in the in in the line of thought with the senior management team. So so we have a lot to thank Johnny Petrie for in that regard. Um, I actually thought he was going to go by the end of the season. I think I declared that to uh, privately to to Joe and to um, to Nigel and yourself, David, at some stage. And I was sure he was going to the end of the season. Uh, my perception was that Bryn Cunningham was going to step up into that interim CEO position, which obviously didn't happen. Hugh McCockey has been brought in, um, which I had a good chat with a few other fans. And I think it's right that we get a businessman in first uh, and his, his track record, you know, um uh, well it's it's um it's not hugely well known to a wider number of people but he's got that link with with rugby and i think johnny petrie was brought in first and foremost as a rugby man and he made himself really accessible to the fans in the early part of his career as a ceo um and then as as the fans collectively started to wear him down uh with uh the typical vitriol keyboard stuff um he he removed himself from all social media platforms and and became a wee bit more isolated from the fan base in that regard. Um, in my profession, in my opinion, I think he made some really really big decisions. I think he was willing and able to make those calls. Um, I personally think the synthetic pitch was the best thing for for uh, Kingspan slash Ravenhill Stadium, um, and I say that because when you look at the books. It was actually literally like for like uh, in terms of expenditure to make that pitch work, to make it a viable intervention. And there wasn't a huge amount between ripping up the entire stadium pitch, putting down brand new, uh, brand spanking new um, uh, drainage and then put them all back together again. Um, but I, I personally think the synthetic pitch is the way forward for uh, the longevity of the stadium and to give all of our school clubs a chance to play there for their finals and their semi-finals, given <laughs> clubs their opportunity as well. And for the future of the province, uh, I hope Hugh McCockey um, gets lots of support from Keith Shorten. Keith Shorten, as head of commercial, has got a huge diary, a huge black book, which he can draw upon for international links, uh, following his his work at the, um, the O2 Arena and his other exploits. So I think with Keith Shorten and Hugh McCockey, I think also the chance of them making that global impact in terms of drawing the right sponsorship and hopefully with with richie murphy's impact uh pitch side and there are a few support you know maybe maybe in the next three to four years we'll start to see our our uh sorry asses being dragged back up into to where we should be that's it yeah absolutely um nigel uh, you know here's one from joe lyons you know does does richie want to be a Ulster long term and you know could it be a case of the IRP force in the hand? Um, what would your views be on um, uh, on, on Richie's long term ambitions? You know, well, do you think he'll I think just the Ulster Joe's question. I mean, I've listened to the man speak a few times, including the, the full interview he did at Ulster Rugby, and it, it struck me that he was asked to do it and was and jumped at the chance. Um, in fact, he even indicated that he would like the job permanently and had even started looking at houses in Belfast. A little bit of a joke and chirp, but no, I think he genuinely feels the next move for him is to move up into a province and that job's available. And I think providing he can gel with the players, um, which I think he can because he knows a lot of the younger ones and he can get something moving and he's allowed to coach the team. Um, we talked about this in the last show and he's allowed to put his plans into place and I don't see why not. I don't think he's been forced into anything. I think he's been asked and he took it and that's, that's the impression I get listening to the guy. Um, and Gerald's point's a good one there. I think, you know, I think that the, with the Dan thing was one thing, but then with the sudden departure of Petri, I think we're seeing the IRFU come in here. Um, and that can only be a good thing. And I hope they go a bit further and look historically and see with the recurring problems we've had at Ulster over the years, because none of this is new, guys. Uh, maybe with Petri, because the last one was Shane Logan, but. None of the coaches, none of this is new. We've had 21, co we've had 16 coaches in 21 years. My goodness, come on. Um, so as long as they, as long as they sort out anything that has repeated each time, because that, that tells me that the same problem is still there. And that tends to be the same people as well. Let's be honest. So, um, as long as they get through that, so that 
Richie can coach the team without outside interference. And I actually agree with what Connor said about the CEO as well. Uh, you know, he should not be a front, for, you know, Shane Logan was a bit in the cameras too much, I think. I think Johnny Petrie was. He tried to back out, but perhaps the damage had been done, particularly with the attacks from certain fans. But um, the guy should be in the background doing his job. Um, he shouldn't have to be in front of the camera all the time, justifying what he's doing. Um, and you don't see that at Leinster. One of the most successful province of the four. There's a lot of models Ulster can follow if they choose to. And they've had, but they've had that opportunity for a long time and they've chosen not to do it for whatever reason. And I think there, if you're stepping in now and may enforce that. So you may find, Joe, that as people in Ulster being forced to do things they're not comfortable with, but that's not always a bad thing either. Uh, I think David Humphreys will have a big input to that. And let's be honest, chances are he knows where a lot of the issues lie anyway. As I've always said, his departing words when he left Ulster were, I can take this province no further. Those are very telling words. Uh, so I think he could be very influential in what happens at Ulster. I think we'll see a, a whole new coaching ticket next season, possibly. Um, Richie Murphy could well be at the head of it, but then he'd bring his own people in. Um, and he may get some assistance from IRFU in that as well. I think we're getting a bit of assistance from IRFU, and it's very much needed, but we need input. Um, and the, perhaps some people at Ulster need, need to realise they need to do things a different way. Oh, excellent thing. And uh, I'm, I'm going to put this out here as well, uh, is that the, the fans need to get their voice back in there as well. And I know that uh, um, the Supporters Club, you know, did have, uh, you know, a spot at the table. And I think it's something which, you know, hopefully with a, a bit of help for, from all of us uh, fans, um, you know, to have that voice back on there again and, uh, and help, you know, steer uh, our our cl- our good club back into uh, uh, you know back to where they should they should be you know the you know we've we've had a lot of blows this last while and we we've we've took a lot of uh, um, you know we, we've took a lot of, a lot of body blows now in this last couple of years you know so I think if if the the fans can be given uh, uh, and you know true fans given a proper voice. Um, you know, I think that can, that can only augur well for us as well. Uh, sorry, I'm going to pop. Uh, and Johnny, I actually agree with your last comment that, that wasn't put up, but it's probably because it would cause a lot of controversy. But Dan Soper is a better Ulster coach than Richie Murphy currently. How? Why? You know, Richie Murphy's been with the guys for a week and a half. Dan Soper's been there for years. How is he a better coach? I mean, I, I, I'm going to say one thing, and this is what gets my head here. Let's have a look at the two CVs. I'll leave it there. Yeah, I just, I don't get comments like that. I'm sorry, Mick. One thing I'd say, guys, is about Richie Murphy's teams, and it's kind of linked to what David's saying about getting the fans back. They always play good attacking rugby. Very, very positive rugby. rugby. Um, and he's and he's, he's got he's all, all this under 20 sides have. So I think, I think, you get that back, and I think Ulster lost their identity a bit during during uh, Dan's the latter stages of his tenure. You know, they kind of they were got a bit forward focused and focused on the mall, and whereas mm-hmm. they always associate Ulster with good good attacking. Did rugby. you notice though? I know we're going to talk about it a little a little while, but funny enough, last weekend a lot of the negatives, but I thought there were some positives, and actually the mall was one of them. It actually worked last week. You know, yeah. I was against a pretty big, pretty big pack as well. So yeah. um, that's probably John Fogarty's influence in there as well, of course. Yeah. Um, well, here, let's see if we can get uh, Simon back in. Simon, as your son, come back to us. Uh, yeah, can we hear you? Nope. No, no, unfortunately not. Oh, no. I'll hear the trials and tribulations when we're live. Uh, when you have somebody coming in live from the SA, you know, uh, we, we will we will try and we'll try and get something sorted. Uh, you know, in, in between. Um, the lackey's on anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, look, uh, well, here let's uh, let's cover the adventures of South Africa very quickly here. Um, looking at uh, the the game uh, last <laughs> end with those sharks, um, you know, for me, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, I, I think we find ourselves a, a new, a new 
long-term prop? Who's it capable of uh, dismantling an ox? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You've got to say, um, when young Scott Wilson came on and stood up, obviously by the time he came on, um, uh, Tom O'Toole was spent. You know, he had done a, a good stint. He was absolutely shelled out, but uh, Scott Wilson uh, Scott Wilson stood absolutely as ground, and uh, the scrum uh, looked really strong. Uh, and his... He's still galloping. He's still galloping like he's uh, Bradley Roberts, you know. So yeah, that side of his game, um, really, really good. He's got some really soft hands with his little passes, but um, his scrummage was was brilliant last week against probably the the best prop in the world at the minute. So I was well chuffed with with Scott. Yeah. Well, here uh, let's see a little bit of Simon, Simon again. Simon, uh, what do you think of, of Scott Wilson's performance against uh, uh, the Sharks after coming on? Oh, oh no, like I said, no. Oh, oh no. Um, well, here, well, Connor, Nigel, do you want to come in on this one? Uh, uh, I thought, I, I could totally agree with what Chris said. Um, you know, Tom O'Toole, I mean, you have to remember South African props don't often play more than 40 minutes. Um, uh, you know, they, they tend to have a, a first half and a second half front row. Tom O'Toole was on 62 minutes, I think he was a bit spent before that, frankly, in the heat, but um. <laughs> and, and we go about, you know, yeah, he left him, yeah, he did, you know, but I think probably John Fogarty will be asked in the second row in the back row what happened there because he went way out and he actually ended up with the, the flanker underneath him. Uh, it was no doubt a good scrum by Ox and Che, but as I say, the very the very next scrum, uh, young Scott Wilson came on and he held him, no problem. So, uh, but I think we do have, a, you know, in a, in a season of horrors so far, uh, Scott Wilson has been the one highlight i think he's the one gem i think also refined and it was through necessity because uh they brought in two props didn't they that weren't really cutting it one was a penalty machine and then they had to give they had to give scott wilson a go and his first game he proved what he could do and the rest is history he's not left the senior squad since so brilliant um but i, I thought our, i thought our pack were good uh in general you know I, I, I think the referee allowed the loose play, the rucks to stall, to go a bit mental at times. He was allowing people away. Both sides, by the way. It was a bit chaos, but the Ulster back row stood up to him and matched them for turnovers and messy play, frankly. Uh, I thought the scrums, bar that one or two, were very good. The lineouts actually weren't bad either. Uh, we lost a couple some of the day. Um, so I was quite pleased with the pack for a first week. And I think you could see John Fogarty's influence in there. Yeah, uh, the, back, the back line moves were a bit disjointed, I think. Um, but should we be that surprised, you know, really with the first week? And they were playing, what, a day and a half after they'd arrived in South Africa, which has got to be tough. I'd like to think we'll see a little bit more this week, but that's, that's another the next conversation, if you like. <laughs> can, I just, can I just comment there, uh, Nigel, about the, the playing a day and a half, a day and a half after arriving? Um, I'm sure you've read it, but again, the usual keyboard vitriol about Ulster's plan going into this game, about not being there a week before the game and, and all that build-up stuff, leaving it a day and a half to arrive. You know, I think a huge amount of people are kind of forgetting where we are financially, and there might be other clubs who have got the resources to arrive a week or 10 days before and spend that time in camp and everything else. But yes, there were, there were fans that actually thought we were going to go over there this weekend and start winning every game again. Not, not realizing, you know, oh, hello, there might be a wee bit of a process we have to go through here with new coaches and we're playing in a different environment, a different climate. And, it, you know, it might take Richie and, and, and uh, probably just a week or two to get things moving the way they want them to. Seems logical to me, but obviously I must be a bit yeah. <laughs> Nigel, what's your thought? And maybe one for Connor as well. What's your thoughts on is it nearly a case that Ulster have to play this season to get to the last eight? I almost right off Montpellier. Is that the right thing to do? Just Mont like Mont Montpellier, Montpellier is not the the top eight is the priority for Ulster. It has to be. Yeah, Connor, what's your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think there's such an imperative on on playing playing in the Premier European competition that the it is it's 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 where where you have to aim to be. I think money, so, abs yeah. abs abs absolutely. You know, and, if, if scraping into the playoffs is 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 probably be better overall than than winning the, the challenge cup 
Yeah. Should have too, because other amazing. results, other results last weekend, Connor actually did us a favor. If you think about it, oh we'll yeah, a lot further down the table, you know. Yeah, yeah, Connacht and Benetton both had surprise losses. I have to I have to give a shout out there to Scotty Wilson as well. I, I know I haven't I haven't been um, th this excited about a prop since since I saw a young Tyg Furlong. Um, but uh, but uh, just a quick one as well. Here's one: Tom Tom O'Toole, St Stewart Wilson, Joe Hopes, Harry Sheridan, McNabney, Dave McCann, Bryn Ward. There's an Ulster pack for you, all twenty four or younger. Yeah. So it's yeah. not all doom and gloom, lads. You know they're all bloody class players. Yeah, and, and maybe Connor, maybe it's you know time that also start really looking at some of the young guns and giving them the giving them mileage and yards because it's something Leinster has done. If you're good enough, you're old enough. Yeah, yeah, but like, like, have you ever had this many young forwards come coming through together? Yeah. It's a long time. Like, you know, you, there was a gap after Ian Henderson broke broke through where, where you had a lot of backs coming through. You know, the whole Jack, Jackson Gilroy Olding gen generation, but not so many many forwards. And yeah. um, now, now you're looking at a homegrown grown pack in the next year or two, right? Yeah. At least three of them. Let's try Simon once more. Let's see if let's see if we can get get a word in them before uh, uh, before we before we head towards uh, the final whistles. Uh, on, Simon, let's see. Can we get a holy? No, no, no. Oh. Oh, Simon. we love you, Simon. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> mini, mini, mini me. <laughs> like we love Simon without his voice. We love you more, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, here, lads. Before before the clock goes red on us, uh, let's have a uh, let's have a quick uh, prediction for uh, for this weekend against the Stormers. Uh, um, what do you what do you think? I'll go first. I want to see an improvement. I I I'm, I'm I mean expectations are a bit lower at the minute by the fans. I think we should be winning absolutely everything right away. Um, I, I I would struggle to see us winning that, but I think a week's a long time when you've been you know in another climate. A week is an awfully long time. I think Richie will get the backs moving a bit better. He'll make them more accurate and. I think we already seen John Fogarty's input to the pack, and we're going to have another. Well, I think he's he's come back today. I think isn't he? Isn't he coming back today? Um, so he's been working with the pack this week. I'd like what I want to see is improvement, and if we get enough of an improvement, you just don't know. I'll be soft to me anyway. As 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 was Simon live there, oh, we're bound to see him as well, aren't we? Um, but let's see progress, and we need to progress fairly quickly for the top eight thing, obviously. Obviously. So, Simon, were you gesturing a win for us? He is. Oh, so, yes, indeed. They, they call him the quiet man. Who would have thought <laughs> 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 I, I think if, if we can literally translate that one from the Flemish, uh, I think the second word was off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Connor, what, what do you, what do you, th how, how do you think we'll do against uh, the Stormers? <laughs> Yeah, more uh, similar to what Nigel was saying. I think uh, more, more progress. Um, yeah, see Mur Murphy and, and Fogarty st stamped their influence on the team and improved mor morale. And I think I think the Ulster will be there or thereabouts. Really looking forward to this game. So uh, yeah. Ulster, Ulster by a score, hopefully. Uh, and, uh, and and what about you, Scrum Half Brownfield? Well, my predictions this year have been a wee bit hit and miss. But I am going to nail my, my colours for the mast. I'm saying 24-16 Ulster. Ooh. And I'm saying Stormers having two cent off at the same time. <laughs> two cent off at the same time. Here, hold on a minute. Benny Wenny's not the referee, so uh, that, could, that, could be that could be difficult there, man. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I think there's a controversy uh, from Joe. Uh, DT, what's your thoughts? You're trying oh, to avoid oh. it. Uh, absolutely not. I would not. It's a, come on here. I'm, I'll nail the colors here on the mask too. Ulster win. Um, it'll be, uh, uh, I'll say, I'm actually going to go for the bonus point here on this one. Uh, I'll go for 24, 24-15. Uh, 
See, that's pretty close to me. That's so very um, close to him. Well, you have right. build up and you more or less put the same score. Oh, <laughs> no, no, I, I personally believe that. Yes, there'll be improvement. I think there's a bonus point in there somewhere to be had. I, so. I, I'd take a win. If we get a win, I'll well, be, if we get a win, we'll take it. <laughs> and, uh, and a false to lose. Uh, Joe Shep says he's buying us all a beer at, at the next fan zone. Oh, yes, <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> yes, I would. He does like his Christmas <laughs> chips. Remember that Christmas? He does, yeah. So that's what he's yep. got us around the Christmas. Absolutely. Perfect. Oh, well. you, that's very kind of you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, here, look, lads, the clock has gone red on us again for uh, another month. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody for who, who's uh, watching us here live and, and in person, uh, whether they be somewhere in the, the middle of the air and from Heathrow, head over to SA. Um, and of course, I'd like to thank Simon Kerry for coming to us. We we sorry we can't have all those problems with the audio, Simon. But it's great to see you with us with you with us. And uh, I hope you're enjoying your time there, and, and hope you enjoy the game on Saturday as well. Um, and Connor, thank you very much for for coming to absolute to, pleasure. To give give us the give us an insider's view of what's happened with us, uh, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully we'll. We'd like to see the Leicester lining coming up again soon. Um, Thanks for having and, me, lads. And, and have a, we'll have a bit of cracking, of course. We'll, 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 have have to go, we'll have to go and invade them there as well. Um, well, look, guys, like, if there's something that you want to bring up uh, on the show, don't, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. You know where we are. You know how to find us. If not, call the A-team, and they'll call us anyway. You know, and, uh, and if there's anything on the chest, if, whether it be... Rugby in Ulster, whether it be women's, you know, we do our best to, to look at uh, at least one of those topics in, in each show. Um, we will we will try and get a uh, a club scene done, a season review done uh, at some point as well. You know, but uh, we you know we will try our best to, to look at things as they are at the minute. And if uh, if we do miss something out, we will catch up on it. And uh, and again, if you have any other ideas, if there's anything you want to see us do. Get in touch with us, and we'd be more than happy to uh, to try and squeeze it in somewhere. Um, you know, we've uh, another few ones for left for this season, but uh, I'm I'm I don't know about you guys, but I'm absolutely looking forward to this next lot of weeks between Montpellier, between the Stormers, and on Saturday. I think uh, it's, it's just, going to be just interesting. Let, Divi, just on that note, um, for Ulster fans traveling to uh, the Montpellier fixture, uh, South Wales Ulster Rugby Sports Club, very kindly. Uh, supported by Simon and Sharon and uh, another team are putting on another big fan zone over two bars. So uh, get in wow. touch with Simon, Gary and Sharon and, uh, and Harry and stuff and, and get yourself down to Montpellier. Two fan zones rolled into one. So thank you for your work, Simon, and your, your girls have done a great job getting that box up to up to Kip Rivers. Good stuff. Thank you. Thanks to the girls, too. Yeah. Do pass that on, side. And look, guys, uh, you know, uh, uh, after we're done dusted here, you know, we will get this uh, up uh, up on our socials. Um, you'll find us on Apple Podcasts, on, on Spotify, uh, and Amazon, and anywhere else where you get your podcasts from. Um, you know, we will do our very best. And uh, and thank you, Ian Gilbert, our ambassador in Madrid. Always the first one to put the comments in. You know, so far nobody has beaten them to a com first comment. So well, we're not even get... Gregor, right? Oh, not Gregor, even, it, isn't not it? even Gregor. It's it's our it's our a Spanish ambassador. That Gregor's always gets in there. Yes. <laughs> uh, but look, guys, like thank you very much uh, for 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 taking the time out with us uh, this evening. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks to Connor and Simon, and uh, uh, and we'll we'll leave you with this thought: if you can't write a good thing, don't write anything at all. Don't. And from us, it's a good night. Good night. Good night, folks. Soft day.